here we go people. How you doing today? It's Carpo once again. I haven't made a lot of videos lately as I used to. Mostly because I come up with these ideas, I come out to make a video and I just say, why bother, you know? I'll have to sit down and focus for a few minutes and it really does take a while to kind of get in the groove of talking to a camera on video, you know? I've had people ask me, you know, like, how do you do that, you know, make videos? It's, it's so hard. I've tried to make them, and it's a pain in the ass. And other people are like, oh, making videos, you know, why do you bother making videos? You know, it's so easy. You're just talking to a camera. Somewhere in between is the reality that I like to converse, not just to express my viewpoint or to tell other people this is how I feel, but rather to say, uh, to open up a, a, a dialogue with humans, other human beings who are in this crazy world with me, who have seen that things are as absurd as they are, but also see that uh, things aren't so bad as some make them out to be. Which brings me to, I guess, the discussion on this video, which is, is society getting worse or better? Are people becoming meaner or nicer? I mean, all of these are just general questions, of course, but what I'm getting at to give you kind of a feel for where I'm going, are we really falling apart as a whole, as a society? You know, When a world is as chaotic as ours, is finally televised, which has only been in the last 50 years or so, to where people have all had access to television and being able to see what's happening in their living rooms, um, it has totally changed the way that we view the world. But more than that, then in the last 10, 15 years, the internet, which is our new window to the world, our instant window, has completely changed the way that we view the world. And a whole new generation coming up, that's all they know. Uh, my generation, you know, we were brought up, we, taught, we were taught how to use compasses in school, but we were still, you know, moving into the GPS age. You know, we, we were still writing things down, and, but the computers were coming in. We were learning how to hit C, colon, slash, slash, run. And um, even at that time, I, my teacher told me, you know, these computers are going to be pointless in 20 years, you know they knew, you know, that, that everything's going to be simplified, and, and this whole world of simplification has given us so much more time to sit and think about how fucked up things are. Pardon my language, but I have done a lot of thought on this in the last 15 years or so. A lot of thinking about the world and the condition it's in, and, and how my perception of that is skewed by what type of media I consume, my own thoughts about the world and people, and how I view humans in general. And that has changed over time. You know, there was a time when I said, you know, murder is getting so much worse, or peop you know, more and more people are dying. And then I started looking at statistics. And then I started looking at the curves and the, the charts and, you know, the graphs showing how many people were killed per 1,000 on this date, and then on this date, and this year, and this year, and showing that worldwide, overall, murder is on the decline, with the exception of wars, of course, but even wars are being fought with so many less people. And we used to lose, we could lose, lose millions of people in one ethnic cleansing or one war, but today um, it's mostly innocent civilians that get bombed, unfortunately, and I am completely appalled by that. I don't want to go into the war aspect of it because it's absolutely disgusting. The U.S. is an imperialist power. That is a huge problem. We have been sticking our noses into everybody else's business and dominating and colonizing places forever, just like Britain has, just like France has, just like Spain has. So many countries are colonizing monsters. I mean, even Japan tried to take over China which is why <laughs> they were pushed back, um, I think during World War II, that it came to a head, but there is a lot of chaos in the world, and people are sucked into chaos. You know, if you turn on the news and they're telling you about, oh, you know, that one story at the end about, oh, some heartwarming tale of a local hero who saved a dog from a tree, but we're going to overshadow that with all these wars and pestilence and all these people fighting and chaos and you see these protests on TV, you see these white supremacist douchebags marching through the streets with torches and then you hear about people getting hit and killed. Um, there's a school shooting almost every fucking day now. 
I mean, there is a mass shooting in the United States every day, and a mass shooting is considered four or more people, and I believe that there's one happening every day now. Uh, people are just shocked to find this out. They think, well, I'll, I'll hear about it if there's a mass shooting. You don't. Um, <clears throat> there is so much going on out there that <clears throat> you can see why people are overwhelmed, and especially if you stick your head into the news for more than ten minutes a day. And so I'm not here to say that the world's perfect. I'm here to say that our view of it is skewed by what we consume, and we are consumers. Our viewpoint of the world, you know, the idea that we've been told for years that, you know, uh, get rich, you know, or, you know, have a white picket fence and, and make yourself wealthy and be happy. I'll tell you, no amount of money ever brought me happiness, you know. Um, I, <laughs> it's not about the money. It's not even about what you have or the things. It's about us trying to fill this hole within us. And some people say, well, religion is what you need for that. But that doesn't work for a lot of people either. Now, for some people, it's, it's enough. Um, you have to find something that moves you in life, something that, you, that a passion, okay? It, it can be something selfish, artistic, or it can be something um, helping others. I don't mean artistic, so I don't mean art is selfish, but rather something where you're involved in your own reality, and then you can share it with other people. But we all want to feel worthy. Every one of you out there, I guarantee you probably want to feel worthy to somebody at least. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world doesn't care about you. You want your spouse to love you, or your brother, or your mother, or father, or your sons. Everybody wants to be loved and understood. And it's not for our own shallow nature of, oh, I have to be liked. It's because we want to know that we're doing life to the best of our ability. And we see other people who have love in their life, and people who seem happy, so why can't we be? Well, to get back to the point here, <laughs> um, that image of happiness comes from media, television, commercials, all this bullshit that we've been taught for so long. Instead of looking through the window of our computers or our televisions of the world, observe the people around you. But that makes it even more difficult, because if you live in a nice part of town, everybody's going to seem happy. They're all going to play their little game. And if you live in the ghetto and everybody's shooting in your neighborhood every day, you're going to think that the world is falling apart. And this is it. The biggest issue is our personal lives and what we experience in them, in our own communities, determines a lot about how we feel about the world. But then we get online and confirm our cognitive bias about this and say, well, look, it's bad in this town, it's bad in every town. Um, I'm not going to deny that everything is falling apart, but when I say everything, I just mean this social construct we've created, which we call civilization. And you see that when Rome fell, all the historic, you know, superpowers that have fallen and crumbled, and all of the ruins of these huge civilizations that have lived in the past, we didn't just die off. We rebuilt and did something different. Uh, this is what emergence is. Emergence of a culture is just like emergence of animals or life within nature. How these groups function, and no matter how well they function, at one time or another, an area dies off. It becomes deserted, or it becomes flooded, and people move on. And this is why we are not, we have to realize we are not working towards a civilization where everything just works. And that we, this is a country, and this is the world, this is the system, all right, we have it all figured out now, the world's going to work in smooth machinery. It doesn't work that way at all, not even remotely. Small civilizations work in the area, in the context, for the people in that time frame <clears throat> for whatever works for those people, I guess, uh, or doesn't work. But we're moving forward and we're changing. We are evolving. The people as a whole are evolving and the institutions which support the framework of civilization cannot keep up with the changing minds of the people. And this is what a lot of folks are calling waking up or becoming awakened. Um, some people will say, oh, that's fully spiritual. Others say, no, that's totally political. Others say, no, that's just being aware that there's corruption and greed or the Illuminati or whatever other story you want. No, being awake just means you're aware to your potential as an individual to do what you choose to do, that you have the power. And especially if you live in the U.S., there's really no excuse for moving forward. If we say, well, we're poor because the rich are rich and they're not leaving any space for the small guy, I say you're, you're just being defeatist. Um, I had somebody recently tell me that it's impossible to start a small business because they make it too hard and too many hoops to jump through for people. 
And I say, well, I started a small business. There's a couple hoops to jump through, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. The system will never be set up the way we want it perfectly, but whenever there's a regulation or a rule or a law, what we have to do is step back and say, not just complain because it's impeding us, but say, why was this enacted? You know, And as a society, we can start removing these old bullshit laws that don't serve us anymore. Uh, but people as a whole aren't keeping up with the segment of population who is evolving their way of thinking. And this is moving beyond us and them. This is moving beyond left and right, or religious and atheist. This is moving into a world where we can look each other in the eye and say, I respect that you have a different viewpoint. There was a time in the Middle East where churches would be side by side on the same road. There were times when there were uh, <laughs> Christian and Jewish churches, the same ones next to, you know, Muslim churches, all, all in the same area. There was a time in certain areas when people were doing well enough to where they weren't fearful and angry at other religions because they weren't doing well. Because ultimately, it's always placing the blame and pointing the finger. It's, it's, it's an ultimate tool of a weak individual to point the finger. It's always the government or somebody else that's causing their problems. And we really are in charge of our own lives. We really do have the ability to do something as an individual. And this sets us apart from everyone else. But it's not about being noticed, it's not about being recognized, or, ah, look at me. But rather knowing that we're moving forward and trying to help the world. But with all the, little, all the people doing this out there, um, I see that things aren't as bad as we've always made them out to be. That if we continue to view the world as falling apart, well, it's going to do what it's going to do. Uh, the world's not falling apart. Uh, only this construct of what we want to be reality is falling apart. And that's how I like it. This reality we've created is complete bullshit. I mean, what we consider to be manners, you know, in the 18, 17 and 1800s, you know, people teaching manners to their children. Well, this is the appropriate way to hold a napkin. And this is how you hold a fucking fork. I mean, how absurd is this, you know? Eat with your goddamn hands if you want to. You know, and nobody, but, but, but if you do, and everybody looks at you funny, you'll think, well, okay, maybe I should kind of follow with what everybody else is doing. That's what we do. We're followers. And in a way, that really helps us. But within society, there are followers, and there are leaders, but it's not that simple. I drew a diagram a while back. I'd bring, break it out right now if I knew where it was. Um, it showed, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the, the sheep, because when people talk about the sheeple, everybody who's following, you know, they forget that there's not just the sheep, there's the wolf. But there's also the shepherd. There's a barn, there's a fence, there's grassland. There are many components to this metaphor if you want to make it work. So, when people are out there saying, oh, everyone else is just sheeple, oh, you guys are just sheeple, because somebody says something dumb or unaware. So when a person insults other for others for being unaware of what's going on in the world, rather than being a shepherd, you're being a wolf. So wouldn't you rather be a shepherd than a wolf? Do you want to help tend the flock of sheep? Or do you want to eat them and destroy them? And some people are so frustrated with their own life, they just say, well, all the idiots should just perish and die. You know, it's like, but you're an idiot too. We're all idiots. One of the things that we have to remember is if everyone acted like we do, if everyone on earth was exactly like we are, uh, how would the world fare? What would society be like? If we want to take an action and we wonder if it's going to be harmful or helpful, ask ourselves if everyone did this, how would it, would it, how would it work? But at the same time, realize that, that people all need to do different things, that that's what makes a community. In an anthill, there's the queen, we have the tenders, the, the workers, and the soldiers. Now, if a, if a flood comes in and takes out a bunch of the soldiers, when the ants intercommunicate with one another, they'll recognize there's less soldiers, and some of the workers will turn into soldiers. They work as a team, and fill the position that's needed for the better of the whole. And with humans, that's a lot harder, because we are so stuck in our own ways of wanting to be recognized as an individual. And there's nothing wrong with peacocking. I don't think that we should be a homogenized society. I don't think that we'd be happier if we were all the same. It would be horrible, of course. Um, it's something that, if you want to know whether humans, you know, we can compare ourselves to two creatures. 
you know, and that's why they call it peacocking, is the peacock feathers, you know. They want to say who's got the best display, and that's who's worth mating with. But when humans do it, when we say, oh, somebody's just dressing up to, you know, to look attractive for a mate, what's wrong with that? That's who we are. That's how we get a mate. If you walk out disheveled in your pajamas and say, hey, baby, you want to go on a date? I mean, you know, there's a difference there. <laughs> you know, people want to know, it, it's, a, it's a very deep subconscious issue, because we know if a person takes care of themselves, then they're probably going to take care of their life, and they'll probably take care of their children. And it's the same way with crappy parents, because there are so many shitty parents out there, and they are the bane of humanity. Uh, the, the, the problem with, with the next generation is the parents who aren't willing to sit down with their kids and listen to what they have to say, to give them props, to teach them as best we can, and give them values and understanding, but not programming them like we have been for so long. To say, the world is no open plate, an open palate. So many parents are afraid of their kids doing better than they did, whether they admit it or not. It's like, but, but we really want that for our kids at the same time. Um, you know, but I guess to return to the main question, is the world getting worse or better? That is fully subjective. It is completely in here. Because it depends on which elements you pick out of the world. If you want to select corruption and greed, uh, perhaps it's getting worse. But if you want to talk about, say, safety um, in certain areas versus others, it's a complex issue. That's all I'll say. I'll leave it at that. Now, I'm, I'm curious to know your thoughts. Is the world a safer place or more dangerous? Um, eliminating the factor of nuclear weapons, which of course is a major deterrent. But uh, I think that the world doesn't have to collapse in order for us to rebuild it. I guess that's pretty much the main point I'm trying to get at here. Is I had a discussion the other day with someone who said, the whole thing just has to be di just dismantled. Like, the whole education system is fucked. It just needs to be tossed out. And, and so do politics. And I said, well, how do you throw out politics? There's politics in even a small group of people. There's politics in a household. It's not just that politics are here and they take care of the country. Politics are everywhere. Politics is just the way that we interact. Um, so it's a matter of replacing it with something that works better. And until we find that, uh, and it may not exist. It's like uh, Sigmund... Freud said, or no, sorry, it was Winston Churchill, he said, uh, democracy is the best, or the worst form of government, except for all the others that have been tried. I know how right he was. He meant was, we just don't know any better, there's no better way to do things. So, uh, you either have a democracy where people agree on both sides and hope that you're educated enough to make a wise decision, or you have a imperialist leader who makes all your decisions for you and then you're trusting that one person knows what's best for the people and you look back in history and see how that's worked out for every other culture and it hasn't so we'll see where we go from here I guess that's all I can say I'll talk to y'all later stay positive